most important thing is to just get it flat. Not necessarily machine shop flat, but reasonably flat. If I run a straight edge down the top, I can mark all the high points with a pencil. The center of my top needs to come down about a quarter of an inch. Now, I can do that with a regular hand plane, but that'll take me at least half a billion strokes. I'm going to use one of the old-timey woodworker's secret weapons, the scrub plane. There's a link in the show notes below to a video we made a long time ago about making one of these for yourself. Of course, you can just skip the scrub plane altogether and use a jack plane. A lot of woodworkers keep a second iron for their jack plane with a little bit of a cambered edge. It won't be as fast as a traditional scrub plane because the narrower mouth means you'll have to take a thinner shaving, but it will get the job done. So the first step in flattening your bench is rough planing to take down all the really high spots. You want to work across the grain at 90 degrees. And don't go crazy. You can easily take off too much with a scrub plane and end up turning all your high spots into low spots. And you'll have to plane down your low spots, which will then be your high spots. And before you know it, your bench top's a half inch thick and your plane's worn out. I've seen it a hundred times. It's better to just take your time, stop and check your work as you go along, and make sure you don't progress too far. Another thing you should be checking is for any twist in the bench top. This will require a pair of straight edges called winding sticks. It can be just a couple of boards like this one, as long as they're straight. It's also helpful to paint or tape a dark edge along one of them so it's easier to tell them apart. What you do is you lay a straight edge on each end of your bench top, right across. Then you kneel and get right at eye level and sight across the two. You want to make sure that they are parallel to each other. If the top is twisted, the edges won't line up and you'll have to remove material from your two high corners to get them down to the same level as your two low corners and then go back and take the material out of the center of the bench. It's a lot of work, so hopefully yours isn't too twisted. Check from time to time with both your winding sticks and your straight edge as you go across your bench top, and when you get all your high spots down, it's time to move on to the Stanley number no. 5 jack plane, this time with a regular iron. This will take a finer shaving, removing all the marks the scrub plane left behind. And the longer sole will also start to really flatten things up. We're still cutting across the grain, but now we're working at about 60 degrees. We'll work our way down the bench and then we'll switch to 60 degrees the other way and work our way up the bench. At first, it's going to want to kind of skip across the bench. And that's because there's a lot of little high spots that were left by your scrub plane. Once it knocks all those down and starts removing material throughout the stroke, then you know you're done and it's time to move on to the next step. What that next step is, is some type of jointer plane. If your bench is reasonably short like mine at about five feet, then just a Stanley number six will work out. Or maybe a little bit longer Stanley number seven. Or if you have one, you could go with a proper long jointer like this big one or a Stanley number eight. You're going to be working with the grain now, going down the length of your bench. You shouldn't have to take that many strokes before you start getting nice even shavings across the whole length. That's when you know that your bench top is flat. At this point, some people will get out their smoothing plane to give it a nice glassy surface. May even put on a few coats of polyurethane or something like that. I don't recommend it. Let me tell you why. Old timey workers prize their bench for one feature in particular. Its ability to hold their work still while they sawed and planed and chopped. A glassy, smooth surface would be counterproductive. In fact, nice smooth bench tops are really a more modern American trend. Even today, many European cabinet makers actually rough up the tops of their bench with a toothing plane that has a corrugated blade on it to give it a nice rough surface to clean off all the dry glue, but also to give it more grip. It's really the way I see my bench, so it wouldn't make sense to put a nice finish on the top. If you absolutely want something on it, Use some boiled linseed oil and call it good. The top is made for working, not ice skating. 